I decided to bump this to the top, and it's literally a series of screenshots that I'm going to read to you, and I promise there's a reason. Okay. There is this great account on Instagram called House and Habit, and the woman that does that follows all the big news stories, you know, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp or Weinstein, Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, she, she's on it. Mm-hmm. And she is sitting in the courtroom currently uh, with the Weinstein trial, mm-hmm. and she had... So much to say about Jennifer Siebel Newsom taking uh-huh. the stand. Yeah, I really wanted to read this to you. She's the first partner. The first partner of I don't California. think we can even say lady. We have to say partner. She now doesn't say it because we don't have other problems in California. That's right. sure. We're down to this. And um, you know, when you're reporting, you just you give the facts. But you know, sometimes when you're reporting through an Instagram account. You could give it a little bit of flavor. She did start all of it by saying uh, basically how much she hates the Newsoms. But she said, so far, she's just like Amber Heard's understudy. Says, first off, the entire court hallway has to walk 50 feet back to the other end of the hallway. We all line up and then back up to the opposite end like children whenever she passes by. Every reporter is forced to leave their laptop or conversation to part the sea for Ms. Newsom to enter the courtroom. We're all cursing her silently under our breath because it's causing such a scene. It's the most absurd thing I've ever witnessed in a courthouse. So every time she comes in, everyone has to get up and like move aside. I don't know if it's a security thing. Yeah, I wonder why. Normally that's just reserved for the judge. That, right. Thank you. All rise. That's she, it. She goes on to say she comes armed with support, too, naturally. 18 plus women, some are Cosby victims, trail her like a queen as she enters the courtroom. This leaves hardly any room for reporters. But all of the major mainstream media is oddly here today, which means they were tipped off or telepathic. Prior to this, big media is rather scarce in the courtroom daily. No Newsom is going to greet an empty audience. Mm. On the stand, she sits with a victim relief guide. She's shockingly scattered and rambling when she speaks. What's a victim relief guide? I've never heard of that in my life. Mm. So, I don't know, Chris, if you could look that up real quick. Um, I'm going to continue reading. She sounds way younger than she is. Uh Uh-oh, little girl voice. She has a valley girl dialect and answers sometimes with, totally. She goes from hysterical fits of tearless crying to completely composed recounts of her career motives. At one point, she does a little shimmy when she admits to being nervous. (laughs) but is sobbing when she's forced to point out and identify Harvey in the courtroom. She reminds me so much of Amber Heard, over-the-top hand gestures and forced crying that dissolves instantly with each question. She's actually uncomfortable to watch. I see Weinstein's two female attorneys connect with the slightest eye roll when she says she sometimes, unfortunately, ran into him at events. Her answers are long and rambling. They go nowhere and answer nothing. At one point, she cries out loud. That well, that's... Yeah probably what drew gavin to her initially like hey what do you like talking about (laughs) nothing oh but like nothing just zip it no no nothing in a circle yeah i like circle nothing talk i love i I love the sound of my own voice yeah yes it was hearts and stars from that oh that's what drew them together this is nothing circle talkers this is the last paragraph at one point she cries out loud that harvey knew i was an empath Really? It's like watching. I don't think he knew what an empath was. <laughs> I did barely knew. It's like watching an outdated soap opera court scene. The judge, slightly swooning in a mask above, clearly loves her because she's allowed to expand on these senseless tangents without any of the strict redirects and interruptions we've typically seen. Nearly all of the defense objections are overruled. Mm. I well, mean, talk about painting a picture. Gotta know where his bread is buttered. And then. Because if the judge is super shitty to the mm-hmm. wife or the no. governor, that's going to be yeah. tough on the career. Yeah. And this is so crazy that she would even be involved in this because we've all been on the women's side yeah. so mm-hmm. far. We're all, no we're all team yeah. victims. And then Jennifer Absolutely. comes up and parades like a queen. What is the story, and Chris can look for it, there is a story about her trying to enlist Weinstein. For her documentary, right? No, this was for something else. She went to, oh, oh, okay. Gavin Newsom was fucking his partner's wife. Oh. And it was uh, not good news for Gavin Newsom, who was fucking his partner's wife because he's a delight. 
<laughs> fucking sociopath piece of shit that you retards in California voted in overwhelmingly mm. because you're fucking idiots. And by the way, you guys get fucking played like a fucking three string ukulele, you fucking pussies. This guy shows up the fucking brill cream and go, that guy knows what he's doing. No, he's a sociopath. But all right, he fucking schooled all you retards and fine, you voted for him. But he fucks his friend's wife. And then she, his first partner, goes to Weinstein and says, hey, you know a lot about this shit. We'd like this to go away. So Fucking how does this wives? how does this work? Oh wow! I yeah. did not know that. Yes. Wow. Yes. What, what did, is this like? Is oh, it, LA Times is going to do a big expose on it any day now I because didn't see they're it on just the cover. A re- oh they do hard reporting. So that story's coming soon. Oh, boy. Fucking bought and paid for fucking pussies who aren't even journalists. Jesus Christ. Yes, because no one knows the story because it's not it's not going to be reported on CNN, LA Times, New York Times. Not gonna, it's not going to be pushed out there. Well, and uh, oh, here we have something. New York Post, Jennifer Siebel Newsom asked Harvey Weinstein for sex scandal advice two years after alleged rape. What did you say? It's LA Times? Uh, oh, no. no it's Post. a newspaper on a coast away, LA Times. Do some fucking reporting. Would you fucking bought and paid for shills? And Jesus Christ. Also, you know who else? And by the way, anyone who doesn't know everything, that's because you go to the same outlets for everything all the time. That's why nobody knows anything. I, I read the Times. I read the New York Times. I listen to CNN online. Yeah, they don't report any of this shit. That's why you don't know any of this shit. That's why you assholes didn't know anything about COVID the whole time. Because you get your news from one spot. Thank you. Diversify your portfolio. Diversify. You know who else uh, is not a fan of Jennifer Siebel Newsom? Remember when Rose McGowan Mm -hmm. had thoughts about that? Yes. Trying to trying to hush her up, and uh, I think she's. What did you say? She's like in Mexico now. She's somewhere. Yeah. What was this story? And like how long? I don't know if she was married to Newsom. At that time. Or was it Gilfoyle at the time? <laughs> yeah. That story's insane. Oh, it's that's an insane story. What was this story? Well, you can, yeah, you can look looking, for it. Sorry, anyway. It, 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 take, it takes quite the person for Ugh. to go to the Harvey Weinstein trial and make anyone say anything other than, well, that guy's a fuckhead. Yes, you're right. Like, what? Like, it takes but, a lot for us to go like, oh, man. <laughs> when we talk about caricatures, and yeah. it, obviously this spans political anything, so it doesn't matter what side you're on. Sure. Is there any more villainous caricature power couple than Newsom and Kimberly Guilfoyle? Man. My uh, God. Yeah. 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 It Both sides get, of the aisle. It, it just doesn't gets, get it just, greasier yeah, than that. <laughs> feels slimy, and that's just not talking about the hair product. That's right. Yeah. Wow. What is, uh, you just want to read the article? Yeah. Okay. Well, when is it from? Uh, this that, that headline we just read was from yesterday. Oh, boy. Oh. Wow. I'd heard about it before yesterday, obviously, but go ahead. All right. Jennifer Siebel Newsom's, uh, Newsom, the wife of Gavin Newsom, sobbed as she described Harvey Weinstein's distorted and, quote, fish-like genitals yeah. during her bombshell testimony. Oh, yeah. Fish-like. That's the, that's, the only one, that's the only thing I want out of this whole trial. Well, <laughs> A, I want Harvey to suffer. Yeah. B, I need the artist's rendering of the genitals because I've heard yes. so many people describe this thing. It sounds like the alien popping out of the chest. Yeah. It, it sounds fish-like. weird. Fish-like. Yeah, fish-like. flaccid e. I don't... It's got gills. I, it's, it's the problem it's, with using it fish... It under the sea? I don't know what's happening. As a description is, you know, you got cod, you got sea bass, sure. you got <laughs> flounder, you got surgeon. Sure. I mean, I could keep going. Hammerhead. Uh, that, walleye. Yeah, salmon. I, and then there's all anemones and right. the squid. Mollusks, and, uh, crustacean. What? You got to narrow it down, Thank baby. You. It's a lot, of, lot under mm. that water. Yes, yeah, mm. sorry. Uh, so yes, fish-like genitals. During you got to bomb- pick a fruit. <laughs> you got to pick a fruit. That's the only cock references there are. You know, yeah. banana, yeah. right? Egg pear. Egg. I got it. Mm-hmm. I, I need a fruit. All right, sorry, guys. During her bombshell testimony at the disgraced movie producer sexual assault trial on Monday, identified in the court as Jane Doe Four, Siebel Newsom broke down in tears, recounting how Weinstein allegedly raped her in 2005 at the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills. "Quote: I'm standing. I'm resisting," she said. Horror. I'm trembling. This is my worst nightmare. I'm just this blow-up doll that he's just trying to masturbate off of. When asked by Deputy District Attorney Marlene Martinez to describe Weinstein's physique, 
Newsom said. Lots of bruises, markings, yellow and green, lots of stretch marks on his belly. Very not physically fit at all. <laughs> Looked uncircumcised. It's humiliating. And strange, okay. though, kind of fish-like. The penis, something was distorted in the testicles. Lots of skin. Lots of skin down there. You're getting hot, Gina. <laughs> this is fucking brutal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Siebel Newsom, a former actress. Oh, and then they go on about her, and that's that's pretty much it. No. Oh, let's see. Oh, Siebel uh, agreed to meet Weinstein at a hotel suite to discuss a film project, and because, quote, he could make or ruin your career. Once they were alone in the room, however, Siebel Newsom said Weinstein changed out of his suit into a robe, then started to manipulate and threaten her while mentioning several actresses' names. She said Weinstein penetrated her private parts with his fingers and then his, quote, deformed penis. <laughs> Christ. Look at this. Is it's, it's things to laugh, but at the same time, my God. Well, See, I'm going to talk ahead. to my kids. Like, you want to get in the show business? Yeah. Let me explain to you what it really is. Just read this story. Uh, that is that is show business. Is this uh, a profession you want to enter? Uh, uh. No. Sorry, keep going. Siebel Newsom tearfully said, He knows this is not normal. He knows this is not consent. Adding at first, Weinstein couldn't get an erection. And then he puts on part of his penis inside of me because he pushes me back against the bed, she said. It's not staying in because his penis is so weird and messed up. God, this <laughs> is I this mean, is your worst night. This is worse than any <laughs> rapist cellmate or solitary confinement. There's, uh, They should free him yeah, right now. There's is, like, you have suffered really bad. As, enough. As much as I may disagree with certain with certain policies and how... and. Man, this is good though. Yeah, uh, this good is... on good 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 on her for this part. Yeah, this okay. part is great. And whenever you're trying to stuff your dick like you're trying to put a sleeping bag back into the pouch, <laughs> that's sexually. It's time to stop. Yeah, take a breather, get some Gatorade. Tap out. Tap Just out. Just tap point. out. Yeah. yeah. It's, right. It's not. It's not happening. Grab right. a, it's not happening grab a tonight. Viagra. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Go ahead. His penis is so weird and messed up. He realizes this. I was just worried I was going to get some disease. It was so gross. Siebel Newsom said she was frozen in fear, but put her hand on Weinstein's penis to, quote, try to make him stop. Oh, I just made some noises to get him to ejaculate faster, Siebel Newsom said. Just like pleasure noises. After Weinstein ejaculated, Siebel Newsom said she was speechless. I just wanted to get the fuck out of there, she said in tears, pardon my language. When asked by Martinez why she continued to correspond via email with Weinstein, even after the alleged rape, Siebel Newsom said she felt what happened was a, quote, one-off thing and that Weinstein had gotten married. I tried to put what happened into a box. A one-off thing? Yeah. Is that how rape works? You're just jogging in Central Park and a guy comes out of a shrub and rapes you and then you correspond with the email because he got, got it out of his system. It's a one-offer. Yeah, he was powerful and had something she still wanted. Quote, I tried to put what happened into a box, even though it came out at times, she said. And my sadness and fear changed. Sounds like the encounter. And my sadness and fear changed at times into anger. Siebel Newsom was, all, was also asked about an email she sent to Weinstein in 2007 in which she sought his advice when Newsom was mayor of San Francisco. There it is. In a prior ruling, Judge Lisa Lynch granted prosecutors permission to use the email, which mentioned an affair Newsom had in 2005 with an aide. Oh, it's fucking uh, one of his partner's uh, wives. Interesting. Good cool. dude, though. You know. <laughs> When I'm in charge of policy. Oh, boy. And uh, I guess when he was talking about freedom in California and freedom to love, mm. I guess he was talking about fucking underlings. Yeah. Huh. He's talking about his own office. I thought he was talking about gay marriage, but no. all right. Oh, okay. okay. He's talking about the staff. Okay. Man. Quote, I believe that Harvey Weinstein had relationships with the press and understood how to handle the press and thought he could be helpful, Siebel Newsom said when she was asked about the email on Monday. During a 15-minute cross-examination, defense attorney Mark Worksman hammered Siebel Newsom about a $500 campaign contribution Weinstein made to her husband's campaign. Siebel Newsom said her husband's staff had asked for the donation at her suggestion, but that the money was returned after the Me Too movement. Quote, when did you tell Gavin Newsom about his allegation of sexual assault? Workman asked. I told him that Harvey was sketchy at different times, and he picked up on it himself when we met him, she replied. During his opening statement, Workman made a dig at Siebel Newsom, saying, Today she is the wife of Governor Newsom. She's the first partner of California. 
she's made herself a prominent victim in the Me Too movement. Otherwise, she'd just be another bimbo who slept with Harvey Weinstein to get ahead in Hollywood. Wow. Wow. This guy's going for the jugular, man. Well, he was the same. He, Harvey's own attorney was the one that was like, look at him. He's not George Clooney. He knows what he looks like. His own attorney. He needs that. The, you know the sign Quincy Jones put in front of the recording studio for We Are, are the World, like check your ego at the oh, door? Yeah. That should have been in front of that <laughs> courthouse. Like, Harvey? Yeah. I know you got a big ego, oh. but you're going to have to check it because yeah. we're going to get into some shit about your dick looking like a squid and uh, weird and you want out of this or not? Yeah. and he disrobed it's and he get had a lot weird yellow marks on him stuff. And then his own guys look at it. Look at this guy. He's built like a fucking beanbag and- chair. Who would want to <laughs> fuck him? For, and forgive me if I'm wrong. Isn't this like the second trial? Isn't this like the yes? This is the L.A. trial, right? But like, so the so the New York would already happen. Oh, he's he's not getting he's not getting so out. So it's like if you're Harvey, don't you just say how do how do we not let this even happen? Yeah, like what? Because what's the point? I'm ne- I'm never getting out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Oh, he doesn't that. have a choice. Oh, okay, they brought him from New York here. Well, because if you're a DA. You want big, high-profile cases <laughs> sure. on your and che- uh, uh, on your brag sheet right. because you got to run yeah, for something. And it's talk about a layup too, right? It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're You're gonna, gonna look good. Fly him back to L.A. and we'll sure. try him in L.A. and then they'll get those Ugh. W's on their Horrible. record. Mm-hmm. Horrible. And again, it must just be I don't know if it's a personality disorder or what. But if she, if all that happened and she just could have said it like a calm adult, mm-hmm. then. Sure, but if she's flailing around and and acting sort of maniacal, I, I don't get how that helps. It, it's it, it's it's got to be such a weird debate in her head where it's like, yes, yeah, she has to give the testimony of the worst moment of her life, and that's got to be gut wrenching and heartbreaking, and my heart goes out to her for that. But at the same time. She's a first partner. She's got political affiliation, so it's like, all right, every answer she gives has to also enhance the campaign and the office and the couple and everything like well so far she did him dirtier than all the other victims yeah. uh, but also combined. you well just done. see how scuzzy oh. all politics oh, are it, it knows no political affiliation ari shafir has uh entered What's up, guys Good hey. to see you. Yeah. Brad, are you part of the show? Uh, today I am. Okay. I'm I mean, in charge. The sheets in front of you like you're like a regular. Yeah. I'm in charge of sound on, effects. Good to see you. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, yeah. God, Ari, we, you. you're 45 minutes late. So uh, That's my fault. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> so, traffic. Uh, from place to place. We my will bad. do uh, 15 minutes and we'll suspend the rest of the news and we'll talk to Ari Shafir. Fuck the news. Who's here. <laughs> <Welcome>. Yeah. <laughs> Ari. <laughs> That was the news with Gina Grad. It's got a new comedy special out, and it's called Jew, and you can watch the uh, full special on YouTube. It uh, premiered a couple of weeks ago. It's great. It's hilarious. Very informative. Thanks. As a Jew, very informative. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, That's yeah. That's even better. Yeah. Well, you grew <laughs> up in a up. pretty Jewish household, right? Yeah, pretty Jewish. Yeah. Conservative, yeah, orthodox. No, orthodox. orthodox. I go conservative. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is this, that's I nothing that's compared that. to that. Raised in a conservative Jewish household, but I don't think they meant conservative. Like I think that. they meant like no hookers. Right, right. Ari, right. You, Ari, you taught me what the Shabbos Goyim was. Oh yeah, yeah. You could be one. You just got to turn on <laughs> lights for people. Yeah. <laughs> They'll hit strongly. I mean, as the... long as the light switch is pretty low. I mean, if, if it's high, that's going to be. <laughs> Did you have a Shabbos Goyim? No, we didn't have one. We just like made sure we did tape like uh, sheets over the light switches so you don't fuck up. And turn it on. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Muscle yeah. memory. Yeah. Was yeah it? But in re- if it's like you left the stove on, you'd have to like talk to your neighbors for the first time ever. <laughs> I love <laughs> the notion of the Sabbath, for instance. I way? think it's good for us. Take a break. Yeah, it's just yeah. just a forced break. Like mm-hmm. people who practice these things, even though they don't, it's an inconvenience or modern day or everything's. You know, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I'm old. Shit was closed on Sunday. Yeah. Shit was closed on Sunday. Mm-hmm. That was your Sabbath. Like, mm-hmm. you may have Forced wanted Sabbath. to go shopping and yeah. buy toys or oh, whatever the temptation was on a Sunday. Shit's closed. Couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. And so you were then forced to go out and, like, play a pickup game of basketball or something. That's exactly what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play basketball. Play non-electricity related <laughs> things. And also now with, like, social media, you could use a day off. Oh, thank yes. you. Absolutely. Kanye West could use one day <laughs> could use off. One day <laughs> off. Just hours. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. So, Ari, so do you look at this special titled Jew, which yeah. is available on YouTube? So, in all the 
Kanye Kyrie stuff is happening, are you just like, sweet, this is going to help me? Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. Chappelle. I haven't seen that one yet, but I assume it's great. Uh, no, I was sort of saying sweet, but also I could see a world where they go so far the other way that they go, nah, we're taking down anything even remotely okay. that's possibly anti-Semitic. Playfully mm-hmm. anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah. You know when they go hard on like, we're not allowing anything, they, yeah. they, they go too far. I was a little yes. worried about it. It's got to be a bad look, though, to where it's like, hey, we're fighting anti-Semitism, so we're taking down Ari Shafir's comedy special. You see that black chef? He made a, like a <laughs> pancake mix, and he put himself on the cover with a with a chef hat, and the Facebook was like, racist, take oh, it boy. off. Oh, really? <laughs> He's like, it's me. It's my company. <laughs> like, no way. That's racism. I didn't I didn't see that. Yes, the worst society. The, when, once, when society announces we have zero tolerance for X, Y, and Z, they always fuck it up. Yeah, it's crazy how in Intolerance can be a bad thing. <laughs> yes, but they have zero tolerance for intolerance. And it's sort of like when you announce there's a gun-free zone. That's great, except for the dudes with the guns know it's a gun-free don't zone. Don't tell them so that. show up with yeah. guns. Yeah. You're like, thank you. Yeah, I don't know why I was thinking about crime, but I was watching some footage of some poor 12-year-old girl, these guys, uh, crime's getting brazen. Mm. Now, it used to be second story men and safe crackers and pickpockets. Oh, my God, do I miss a pickpocket? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you even know you were robbed anymore. until after the check comes at the meal? You, yeah. you know what I mean? My necklace! This yeah. was a couple of guys <laughs> on a scooter just riding down a sidewalk in New York, like on a Vespa. Mm. And if they would pass anyone with a necklace, they would just grab it. And keep going? And we're now at the point yeah, where we need oh, breakaway right. necklaces because they grabbed this 12-year-old girl's necklace and they were just dragging her down the sidewalk. Oh, we need necklaces that are not too hardy because you will this? get dragged around. We all wear suicide vests. And so <laughs> if you start to get robbed, you take the guy out with you. I rarely hear got- Jews yeah. actually exult the virtues of a suicide <laughs> yeah. vest. I'm an outsider. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> out, out of the box. I try to think. <laughs> it would slow down. A couple suicide bombings on it on sure. would slow down yeah. uh, uh, thieves. <laughs> yes, this was up there with my... Uh, airbag in the steering wheel of the automobile, which is, I thought people are getting a little fast and loose with their driving. They're texting, they're looking at other stuff, they're completely checked out, yeah. because we're surrounded in crumple zones and airbags, and there's so much, sa- no one dies in a car wreck anymore. You used to have to really pay attention, otherwise you would die. The the, the dashboard no. was made of steel, you had no head, you had no shoulder harness. You had your, no seat belt. Your head would just whip forward and smack the dashboard and your head remember it like, went through the windshield. Yeah. Like a lot of guys <laughs> yeah. going through yeah. the That's windshield. That's why I said you had to wear a fucking seatbelt because you could attack someone else. I, I said if you took every like seventy thousandth wheel airbag and you just filled it with moose jizz. That would keep people on the straight and narrow. Just thinking, uh, there's an off chance that could go full moose of- bukkake <laughs> if I even tap the car now in I'm front of me. Now I'm dead and covered in moose cum. No, that's, you'd be. Oh yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. worked that part that's out. That's how they're yeah. going to find you. Yeah, <laughs> he's drowning moose. <laughs> moose, moose he died chick. doing what he loved, <laughs> Just sucking off moose. <laughs> How's the world treating you, Ari? You've said a lot of controversial things. You know, I like the, to stir the pot. You in, get the, it. in the past. <laughs> and then everyone jumps on you. But yeah. then at a certain point, you become like Dave Chappelle smoking, which is <laughs> none of us could show up to SNL and light a cigarette and walk so out on stage. He just lights up and we're like, we're not allowed to smoke here. And he's like, I am. Like, Damn, <laughs> yeah, you are. He knows it. But yeah. like Snoop Dogg did with weed, mm-hmm. he's done with cigarettes. Mm-hmm. South Park's and maybe. With- yeah, maybe you're doing that with controversial statements. I like, think at some point, uh, you'll find new people that don't know me yet. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, sweet. I still have people left to attack. <laughs> yeah, to are you off. finding people are buying tickets to see you just because they're like, well, well, Herb, we should go see a comedy show tonight. And then they're in the front row and you say something. It's, it's going to be a problem with this Jew stuff where I'm talking about Judaism for an hour and a half. You're going to show up to my next hour and it's just about sucking off mooses <laughs> and, then and, then, and then i'll be like well this isn't what i expected at all so yeah so you're going around like kind of like the whole bob saget thing where it's like oh he's america's dad and he just has the like the, the filthiest shows. Shows. Yeah. And I have two different old couples leaving my shows in chicago and mm-hmm. said to the management go it's not enough that he's saying that school shootings are a good thing 
It's that everyone else is laughing about it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're yeah. like, I'm not doing this to piss you off, but it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice extra there, detail. There are there there's sometimes <laughs> when you have a heckler or someone who just leaves, but then you find out why, and you're like, good. Yeah. yeah, right. I'm, to to I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. I'm not I'm not for you. You weren't supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know what these people what conversations they had where they thought a comedy club is a good idea for them to be at when they're obviously not good at sitting there and listening to someone else talk for yeah. a while. I I'm not I easily feel, offended, but I'm like sh- yes you I are. feel that yeah. way when I see like, you know, Rotten Tomatoes score and you know, mm-hmm. No Country for Old Men gets 89% and that meant 11% of the Didn't care critics went, mm-hmm. what, what is this? That's yeah. not how uh, a bowling alley is. It's not, it's not for, <laughs> that's not for me. Yeah. Like, but well, you did know what this was, and yeah. wasn't this a good version of what you thought it was mm-hmm. going to be? Yeah, or something like um, like Dark Side of the Moon on right. YouTube. Right. <laughs> and they'll be like, nah, who, who's disliking? Negative comment. Yeah. What Chris, you, you ever find for? that scooter on the sidewalk uh, pulling the 12-year-old I'd By the necklace, that. I I can't figure yeah. out whether they got hold of her necklace or something else. Look at her necklace, but they were dragging her around. Jesus, you know we live in a time where they tell women not to wear ponytails because you could get mm. yanked by it. Ah. As you would say, what the fuck year is this? Yeah, what are we doing? Yeah. That's why the sisters wear extensions because it breaks That's away like a lizard's away. tail when they scrap in front of the club. <laughs> That's the evolution. I'm not making that up. Yeah, That's right. Ari will back me up. Right? I'll back that up. I, I, growing up conservative Jewish, I know a lot about Judaism. I had never heard the 160th rule in my life. Oh, yeah. That's orthodox. That's our that's our screaming uh, fire in a crowded theater. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we all knew it. It awesome. never came up. What's the 160th? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. If you get a small piece of unkosher, ham or, okay. or bacon or whatever, in some kosher soup, mm-hmm. it's like how, how, how much it makes it non-kosher. If it's like one speck, it's... The number is There's 160th. A so it does one thirtieth. You're going to purgatory. You're not even. You, you gotta okay. chuck it. But it and does. Don't give it to the non-Jews. Make me realize why why all you guys became accountants because between <laughs> the Shabbos Goyim and the one yeah. sixtieth, you're constantly trying to work around the code. That's how you know the know act I mean? is. Yeah. The yeah. It's all loopholes. <laughs> it's all loopholes. Loophole. So that's where perfect tax account, uh-huh. perfect mm-hmm. base for accounting, mm-hmm. right? The government wants this. Wait, who'd you eat with? Was that a work friend? Yeah. Oh, your cat's no, a deduction. Did you talk about <laughs> him on the podcast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you mention one thing? <laughs> We have the, oh, uh, of course, New York. Bring it, it's still bringing it. Yeah, so this is Queens. Two men are suspected in at least seven <laughs> necklace snatchings, including oh. one cut on video in Queens showing them dragging a 12 year old girl. Police say the girl's walking home from school on Layton Street. And when the video shows two men riding on a moped drive up next to her on the sidewalk, in the video, one of the men can be seen grabbing a necklace from her neck. The driver of the moped hits the gas and they drag right. her several feet. That's it's great. Like, Whoa. Right. Yeah, we'll find it. They'll find the clip. But, did necklace did not did not break, release did not release faulty necklace ooh yeah. we need two things because then Chris Red got his chain that's right. snatched but it broke apart wait Chris Red got his chain like when the guy beat the, smashed him in the he face. punched what, him and snatched his chain that's I think what the witnesses and said. then the chain broke apart so now there's nothing now, it to was steal. about it was just a robbery oh here it is oh my god girl. being dragged oh, go, by this vest oh and then and they he crashed, crashed good. And, thing and first off i'm no jeweler back to the jews but But how (laughs) valuable a a, a piece of jewelry is a 12 year old have living you know walking home unless it's like dj khaled's kid Uh, yeah that's she's not in queens no also don't ride on the sidewalk it's very unsafe that's right (laughs) what would that chain be what would resale on what's the average price of anything at claire's yeah $17, $17, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. Also, you got to have the wherewithal to like, when it doesn't break, go, no, not this one. Yeah, yeah. that's Let not your go. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you, mm-hmm. you crashed your Vespa. You're still trying. It's like, get out of there. Yeah. No. Remember it's, heat? You got to walk away? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's certain, at a certain point, there's uh, force majeure, divine right. intervention. Right. Like, mm-hmm. by the way, this young girl may cure cancer. Yeah. You know, l- let her breathe. You know, obviously, the, it, what today's not our day. Yeah, yeah. it's not Beshert for you. Not Beshert. That's very nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how Jewish are you now, Ari? Zip, dude. <laughs> Just zero. Yeah, I'll only fuck black hookers. <laughs> <laughs> I more Asians for me. Okay. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I love the Jews. I've always loved the Jews. I, it was a very simple model for me. My family is a bunch of white trash goyim, but I had a Jewish grandfather from Hungary, Laszlo really? Gorog. Married in. Married in. And he took care of business. He took, he cooked Sounds for like people. He, he was, he'd take a sweater. You know what I mean? He, he made me lunch and would bring it to me on a tray. Like when what? I was watching TV, he would tell me stories like bedtime stories and stuff. He was a regular, normal, loving guy. And I was like, this is the only Jew I've ever met. And I'm living in North Hollywood with a bunch of idiots. But this guy, he's, he's making me dinner. He's taking care of me. He's a good man. And then... I, I met other Jews at North Hollywood High, but they were the ones who grew up in the Hebrew Heights and yeah. came down the hill and went to North Hollywood High. The uh, Jeff Bucks and the Nate Wittenbergs and the Robbie Levines of the world mm. and um, Alex Arado. And they all went off to like Stanford and Berkeley and became lawyers and like successful. And then my white trash friends, we all just stayed in the valley and worked on construction <laughs> sites. And I was like, there's a difference between There's these people, and I think these people are better. And I know other people want to get a Molotov cocktail and burn down their house. I would like to befriend them and see <laughs> if they can help me get a job one day. They all have the business sense, but some of them are like, get their hands dirty, and then you get the, the like, you know, in here, it's like you got the Weinstein type Jews. Yeah. Right. That are like, yeah, <laughs> it's like that's that's what they're all talking about. But what? Nobody minds to get their hands dirty, Jew. Is the... <laughs> I, the the hatred of Jews or the periodic hate, hatred of Jews seems to be based in envy. And here's an interesting ah, I have a thought for the Jews okay. in the room and Brad. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yeah. Like Brad it. is a quarter Jewish, which is half Jewish <laughs> to regular sized people. <laughs> I don't know if people know that. His mother is actually. <laughs> so now so here's a here's a thought and you got everyone weigh in. Okay. 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 I've written I've written about it in my first book. I've complained about this a long time. When I was young, there were people who were successful. Those people who were successful, you looked up to them. You went, that guy's doing something right. You one day, little Johnny, you too, if you work hard, will have a big Mercedes Benz and live on the hill in the big house or whatever. We've entered a whole new era where we go, you know, uh, Rick Caruso, billionaire, Rick Caruso, developer, you know, and running for mayor. It's like, it's a pejorative now yeah. to be successful. That's and well. we had a choice mm -hmm. about 15 years ago in this country. You could go the success route and you could mirror it. You could go family, education, hard work, or you could go what everyone's been peddling politically over the last 20 years is disgruntled. You guys aren't getting ahead because someone else is holding you back. I never thought that growing up. I wasn't getting ahead because I wasn't working hard enough. I should emulate the people who were successful. But politicians figured out that the unsuccessful people, it was much easier and it's much, and they're much lazier. Just pitch it to them that we live in a society. We're not an even playing field. We've, we've talked about politicians get up there and do nothing but talk about equity and inequity and social injustice and what all, it's all, it's all over the place. Well, how long before the people that aren't doing very well would look at the people who are doing well and go, fuck that guy? Yeah. And aren't we fostering it now? I mean, you can blame Kanye, but we're fostering this whole... Scapegoating? Yes, att the attack Holocaust. the people right. that are successful. That's what they did the Holocaust. It's, but they, it's they the like, politicians yeah, that are doing it. Was it was the politicians of the Holocaust. They were yes. like, hey, we just need an other. Who's going to be the other? Like, Jews, you'll do nicely. There yes. are the reasons where it fucking it's not because of the war in World War One. It's not because of that. It's like eh, it's the Jews. Yes. Yeah. How long till they just go after everyone? They hate Elon Musk who made an electric Ooh. car. Right. He did yes. everything they wanted for for the environment. Right. But if you're a politician, like if you're Michelle Obama and you're out there just blathering about inequity and we live in a racist society and blah blah blah. Well, how long before people of the race that's being stepped upon is going to go look at the people and blathering about, well, you didn't build that business yourself. That wasn't you. You know, you needed the government. How far, how long before those people are going to go, yeah, fuck those guys who have a bunch yeah. of shit. Yeah. Let's go after them. And then we, then the same politicians go, there's no room for hate. We're, there's nobody can hate here. There is no tolerance for hate. Well, then shut up. Yeah, but. Stop driving everyone apart, then, if you don't want hate. 
I, I love there it. Is. Yeah, I love when the politicians will say things like, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the people in power that are keeping you down. It's like, you, you. are a politician. Yeah. You. Right. Thank you. That's you. I saw a politician go on stage at the cellar and uh, he was talking <laughs> really? about how, yeah, he was talking about, it was after he was done, but to, they, they put him on. He was talking about how they need a, a, a pharmaceuticals cost too much. And it's like, when are they going to change? And I followed him and I was like, you. Yeah, we never had control over it. No. You, you were right there. <laughs> you I went into the office with them. That's what uh, when Gavin Newsom like came to LA and stood on a pile of trash mm. because they're like robbing trains, mm-hmm. <laughs> running in and pulling FedEx boxes off train, and he's like, "What's going on around here?" <laughs> Somebody needs <laughs> to answer for this. That's my. <laughs> Who's that's in charge here? Oh wait, me. Oh, oh shit, yeah, man. Oh shit, uh, Ari. When it comes to your special, uh, I got to ask because. We're, available we're, on YouTube right now. Yes, we're seeing more comedians do this. They're sort of like they're self financing stand up comedy. I'd self, like to see more producing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but w- how'd you decide to go the YouTube route? Is where you get the most views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. My last special I put on Netflix, and it was like a better time for Netflix back then. Mm-hmm. It's kind of I don't know the 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 reach has gone down. Not not as much. Is you it feel is, you can reach more people on YouTube? Yeah, by so, by a lot. So, you know, with Showtime, it was HBO, it was yeah, HBO for over a while. Netflix Comedy and whatever and Comedy Central. And so his Netflix sort of had its run with stand up. It's still a good platform, but yeah, it's not the heyday anymore. And it's, it's gone downhill a lot. A lot of them just come and go. You don't even know. Like my friends, I'm like, wait, wait, you were on that when was that? They're like, uh, six months ago. I'm like, I didn't even hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. They don't so, they don't focus on the stand up anymore. It doesn't come up as like there's a new stand up special. Mm-hmm. Just don't even get notified. So they're starting to carve their audience out, and it's a lot of scripted and then unscripted stuff, but not so much stand. They're maybe drifting away from stand up. This is anecdotal. It seems to be a lot of docu series. Mm. That's docu-series. kind of their thing right now. It used to be documentaries was now, a big yeah. thing. Now it's binge, bingey things, docu series that Just, you can have yeah. seven episodes of. Ne- right, exactly. Netflix has this thing of like not putting money into their fucking series. Mm. It's just done shittily. <laughs> so YouTube initially was a place you'd go because Netflix didn't want you. It, it seems initially. Yeah. yeah. And then it turned into its own thing. And then now it's, it's also the only platform that does not censor their comedians. Mm-hmm. They have, they have a, a, in their algorithm, whatever they go like, you know, the stuff that say, you can't say that on this. You can't say that on this platform. They go, Oh no, that guy's on a stage. So that's allowed. Mm-hmm. So wow. they're smart. Yeah. They, they really are creating. smart about it. They, are you they, listening? White supremacist. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Put a brick wall behind you. Have a microphone. Right. Say you're at the chuckle hut. But they understand. And you're good. Yeah. I was on stage with me and Jay went to a uh, big Jay went to uh, Miami and, and afterwards he's trying to get laid. And this girl's like, we liked you, but that other guy was an asshole. And he was like, what do you mean? That's my friend. She goes, uh, he was happy his schools get shot up. And he goes, Oh no. And Miami's full of literal idiots, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he goes, no, no, he doesn't really feel that way. She goes, he literally said he's happy when schools get shot. Oh, and then Jay was like, let's just have sex. Like, like, I'm not going to I'm not get through to you. But like, that's Miami. And the, and these Netflix, HBO, comedy, they, they've kowtowed to the Miamis of the world. You right. can't understand, like, yeah, I didn't mean that. Yeah, I well, meant the opposite of what I'm saying. The joke of what I'm doing, pointing out the absurdity of how horrible it is by and, saying I like it. And they do get it. Yeah. They're just worried about some of their fans not so, getting well, it. Well, the people in Des Moines don't understand that this you... Is, <laughs> this is scary because this makes it sound like if we're skipping over everything that makes modern comedy modern comedy, are we going to go back to fucking vaudeville and spinning yeah. bow ties? Yeah, take and things that are so literal, yeah. It's lame. Yeah, Anyway, the, <laughs> focus on the positives. YouTube is not doing that, so it's a great place for like real stand up. And you fi- and you finance this yourself? Uh huh. Financed. That's a good way to put it. Paid for it. Yeah. Who, who lit all those candles? Yeah. Uh, uh, Lauren you Albert. don't pay for stuff. <laughs> it's like, it's like I you built a black deck. People like, finance. You got Mexicans. See, uh, see, I I'm envious of you not being married because this conversation with my wife would not go well. Exactly. I spent pr- close to half my money on this. Wow. And uh, and people are like I'm like well dog food is way cheaper than child food yeah so yeah. I could do it exactly yeah yeah, yeah. W- whenever I talk to you you're all you're like I'll see you at the comedy store I'm like oh hey Ari haven't seen you around for a bit where have you been he's like oh I've been motorcycling around Manchu Picchu or whatever the heck you're <laughs> Manchu doing Manchu Picchu is exactly <laughs> right <laughs> you're all, you're always on a trip or a Try trek or fun, doing dude. something yeah and yes and- they're 
Single people can do fun things. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. jealous. <laughs> it, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. To oh, have well, you have no kids e- either. Yeah. Okay. Couple in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, former laws, <laughs> for giving me my freedom. So, uh, and I do think it's murder, and I availed myself of that right. <laughs> the. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> All respect I, to the fallen. Yeah, I was ahead. talking to Harlan Williams about this. I was thinking of Jeff Ross and Sarah Silverman, Harlan Williams, Doug Benson, like guys like you, like combined <gasps> combined age seven thousand zero kids, yeah. and there's no and, and, and Jeff I, is forty percent of that. Yeah. And I said that. I said that. It it is insanely rare that you would meet someone in their 40s or late 40s, 50s, and just go, no kids, never had kids, Mm -hmm. ever been married? Nope. Like, you'd be hard-pressed to find that person in America or any other country. That was like, what? Why is it 70% of comedians? (laughs) And is it because you're all self-indulgent narcissists who just want to smoke weed (laughs) and fucking do what you want (laughs) all day? could be. And like, don't you want to ruin that by having some dumb fuck in your house all the time? (laughs) I know. I'm like, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Some needy child who just takes, 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 doesn't contribute to the finance of the household in any way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I I forget about Bill Maher just because he's kind of the poster child for this group in his later 60s but yeah. you can put I could put together Brad could Ari could a group of 25 prominent male and female comedians who were all in their late 40s early 50s never married never had yeah. kids you, you, you yep. find guys who are divorced you find they had a kid and then mm-hmm. I remarried had right. a second kid you don't find zero kids and zero marriages outside of stand-up comedians. And you can spot them. You can spot mm-hmm. them not sitting in their car, look, working up the courage to go into their homes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a yeah. sign. They just park and go right in. <laughs> That's right. Start playing Xbox. When you nope. case your own home. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Because I know who these people are because these are the people that when I get home from a show on the road, I text them with no thought of like, oh, I could be interrupting something. Uh-huh. They, right. they, they could have somewhere to go. Like, no, I know my... My married friends they're like okay can't text after 10 because then the wife's oh. gonna get mad at him joey diaz called me once it was like 4 30 in the morning he's playing uh gears of war like heavily <laughs> and, um, he called me i was like hello and he just started laughing <laughs> and i was like what are you laughing at? i was like i didn't i mean there's literally no one else that would be up this is pre wake up post sleep <laughs> yeah right and it wasn't even thought like ari will probably be up <laughs> and i was <laughs> and we're like, eating like gino's pizza rolls yeah probably like probably a lot filling up on gummy bears nice. yeah. yeah like a full gummy bear meal it's a good life yeah. yeah tostinos really gets you by yeah mm-hmm. you're getting fat oh well <laughs> yeah who's gonna complain it's on me. yeah to impress who yeah <laughs> you're so you're snoring like no one will hear it it's like a tree in the woods. A snore for like a single person. It's like when you person. scream in outer space. That's yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Ari Shafir's uh, Better Late Than Never is the name of the special. <laughs> Sorry. Shoo. Well, you know what, Ari? I think we should just have you come back and sit in and, and you know, do a long extended yeah, dance version of this. Chew mm-hmm. is the name of the special. It's uh, available on YouTube, and he's got dates coming up, Hyenas Comedy Club, that's coming up December 1st through the 3rd, and you can go to com for the live shows. You can also check out uh, Alex uh, Josky's book, Spies and Lies, and Brad Williams. Show's coming up at the Brea Improv this Oops. Friday through uh, Sunday, and then also more <laughs> dates, bradwilliamscomedy.com, me in Tucson at the Rialto Theater coming up on December 16th. No, 15. Calm down, everybody. Yeah, and then we'll uh, do some shows at the Tempe Improv as well. Just go to amcool.com for all the live stuff. And until next time, it's Sam for Alex and Brad and Ari and Gina saying. What do I do? Mahalo. Mahalo.